welcome to one of the first lectures for content management systems. This is going to be talking about CMSs and their uses. I'm not sure as far as folks who are taking the course if they have ever worked with a content management system before, so I wanted to provide a quick little lecture here just talking about and helping guide you through the PowerPoints. So overall, just to start out so that everybody's on the page, same page, what is a CMS? Uh, it stands for Content Management System. Now, why would we want to even use a content management system? How is this different from a website? Uh, realistically, content management systems, because they have kind of an administrative backend that is very clicky, draggy, droppy, it can help with a lot of the heavy lifting regarding creating a web presence. This can actually alleviate the issue of having to have like a web development team in a company and also enables you that you're not having to have a web developer to make updates every time you want to change something on your website. By having that administrative, clicky, draggy, droppy backdrop to a content management system, you can have a lot of folks who may not be as savvy at web development still able to go in and edit sort certain portions without actually breaking and bringing down the entire website. So, I want to point out though, you know, from a, that is the complete baseline of content management system. If you want to do all of the bells and whistles, yeah, you are going to need somebody who is familiar with scripting, markup and programming languages. However, you know, this is a great option, you know, for personal websites. This is a great option for startup company websites. Uh, it really can get the ball rolling. Additionally, another thing that a lot of people like about content management systems is the fact that they are open source. For those of you who are not familiar with open source, what an open source element is, is that you don't have to pay for it. It is kind of a community-based project of, you know, everybody working together, everybody coming together to try to make it the best thing that it can be. And therefore, you know, re-releasing it back to the public and nobody has to pay for it. So I talked a little bit um, previously, but just again, your heavy swingers in content management systems, there are many, 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 many options out there. You do not have to use these. However, um, whenever I have been looking at and just kind of perusing uh, full stack, de stack developer jobs out in you know Pittsburgh or in the surrounding areas, Really, the three you see whenever people are talking about CMSs is WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal, in that order. Everybody knows WordPress. Um, Joomla and Drupal, though, very much hold their own as far as design development. I would say out of the three of them, Drupal is probably the trickiest. Uh, personally, you know, full disclosure, I don't like Drupal as much as I do WordPress and Joomla. If I had my druthers, I would probably actually favor Joomla even over WordPress. As we get into the course more and into each of the individuals, I'll talk more about that. Uh, Drupal, it's more from its installation process. I feel like it's a little bit more convoluted in comparison to its WordPress and Joomla counterparts. However, once you get Drupal installed, it's really, it's a phenomenal content management system as far as the controls, the editability, and the sections and controls that you can add in there. I did add in here on this PowerPoint, just so everybody's aware. Do not confuse whenever you're looking at job postings. If you decide after this class that this is where I want to go, I want to work with content management systems, you may see the term LMS. This is not the same. This is what we call a learning management system. So for example, like Blackboard is a learning management system. This is more in the educational realm as far as training, learning, etc. You can't really have like a website like you could with a content management system. And again, uh, another thing to point out is, you know, I've been seeing website throughout this little lecture here. Once upon a time, a lot of people just looked at things like WordPress and it was like, okay, it's a blog. Uh, that's great. Honestly, yes, they can blog, 
that's not the only thing you can do. You have so much flexibility now from the community that the community has developed plugins, different web page themes, that it's not just blogging anymore. You can have it be a full blown website. And I did provide some links for you in the PowerPoint if you wanted to actually, all three sites, they've, they've got their best of the best showcases going on that you can click on and go check out what people have actually done with these CMSs. So again, kind of coming back full circle here, your big benefits that why should you choose to do a content management system, especially with this web certification? Why should I do a CMS instead of a website? Um, number one, you can get a very flexible, um, usable website without having to know every last language that is needed to build a website. I mean, bare bones minimum from a front end full stack developer standpoint, you're looking at at least knowing HTML, CSS, and some form of JavaScript, and maybe even from a layout standpoint and a usability standpoint, something like Bootstrap. So that's four elements right there you need to know out of the gate. That's not even talking about if you want to collect information from a user and then have it stored on the back end. Now you're getting into database, SQL, PHP, all those sorts of elements that you need to know on top of everything else. Also, there is the side too, you know, you have a third realm there, graphic design. You're also the designer of the web page. So you got to make the pictures, you've got to make the logo. Content management systems, very much kind of get rid of that for you. You know, they kind of do the lifting for you. Uh, last two items I do want to draw your uh, attention to is for instance, whoops, down at the bottom here, ease of setting up security. As a web designer and developer, this is something that is easily overlooked. The content management systems, they have this built in automatically. They have plugins that strictly deal with dealing with spam bots, things like that. And like I said previously, it's a cost effective option. Instead of having to think in terms of, I need an entire web development and design team, you yourself might be able to just take care of the CMS and then have people go in and have specific sections that they're updating. So what are the negatives then? We've been going on and on about how great these are. What are the problems? Honestly, in my opinion, what I've seen over the years is the biggest hurdle is testing and hosting. You do need some experience and understanding of web design and development. Now, not heavy, but a lot. And one of the biggest hiccups I see is that folks don't realize that because you are working with server side languages like PHP in a content management system, they don't realize when they download that they need some sort of local server host, such as I mentioned in, uh, earlier, like XAMPP or MAMP, to act as a testing environment. Now, there are plenty, of, another negative I would argue is there are plenty of themes and plugins out there to get you started, but what if you want something specific for your company? Uh, there's no themes out there that are meeting your vision and you want to, you know, okay, what do I do now? This is now where you will need more web developer experience. You can design themes. There are plenty of tutorials, MOOCs, textbooks out there that do go through literally the only goal of that item is to teach you how to make a theme in a content management system. It does require a lot of knowledge as far as understanding the, la the web languages that are involved there. The only other negative I guess that I didn't kind of point out here too is, you know, having to cross the bridge of once you have your CMS ready, uh, actually uploading it to a live server space. That can be a little bit tricky. We'll talk about that probably in the last week just so you're aware of the process. But otherwise, I mean, for right now, I would focus strictly on getting familiar and comfortable just working with CMSs. Don't even worry about getting it out on the web yet. Going through the process of downloading, getting an install set up, and then actually editing using the tools at hand should be probably your top priority here. So that kind of ties into this last point here, you know, what one should you be using? Yes, familiarity with as many as possible is great. However, 
to be honest, once you get past the install phase, if you are comfortable with one admin side as far as the admin user interface, some others, like for instance, if you're comfortable with WordPress and you switch to Joomla, some of the terminology might be different, but the concepts are the same. So really, you master WordPress, you could probably fumble your way through Joomla. And likewise, you could fumble your way through Drupal and other elements. You might have to do some digging on the net as far as getting into the nitty gritty elements. You'd still be able to kind of figure them out. So that's kind of just the overview of CMSs and getting us started with CMSs.